my hints are not working. Ah, this old chestnut. I'm hinting in SQL to make it perform better, but the hints are being ignored by Oracle. What am I doing wrong? Possibly many things, possibly nothing. Let's explore. I put this in here because in this same question, someone put a quote actually to a blog. They said, I found this on a blog post in the real world hints are ignored frequently by the optimizer. It's sort of a little bit of misinformation out there, which I wish would be fixed by people who own blogs, but also I'll happily accept that it's perhaps somewhat Oracle's fault in the sense that we sort of chose some bad terminology. This is, would have been a much better choice of terminology. Hints are invalid frequently and therefore we can't use them or the optimizer can't use them. And this is probably a, would have been a better choice of nomenclature by us inside Oracle in terms of we sometimes use the term ignored and, and it sort of creates this perception, especially with the word hint, which doesn't sound like you know an order. It creates this perception that the database sort of, you know, you lob at some things that sort of looks at it and says, oh, you know, I'd rather not. Or, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. It doesn't work that way. A hint that cannot be followed by the optimizer is the ones that we, we choose to ignore. They're generally invalid. So let's look at some examples. Here's, a, here's a, little, a little quiz for people. If you quickly just cast your eye down those four statements and try to work out which of the statements actually has a valid hint. So the first one is I want to use the accounts primary key index. The second one is I want to use an index on the accounts table. The third one I want to use an index on scott.accounts. And the last one is use index on A. And there's a very simple answer to which one of those queries has a valid hint, and the answer is none of them. They're all invalid. And that's perhaps one of those nasty things about hints is because they are presented to the optimizer in the form of a special comment, if the hint is incorrectly constructed, it just becomes a comment. There's nothing in the database that tells you, oh yes, there's, there's no flag that you can say, if that hint is wrong, then error out the SQL. In 19C, which I didn't put some slides for, we've moved some distance toward addressing this. Part of the execution plan can now show you which hints were not used and why they were not used. It's um, the new parameter in the format option called hint underscore report. So when 19 comes along, uh, that'll be something that obviously all SQL tuners will be relishing. There are other ones. For example, sometimes a hint is correctly constructed, but it is impossible for us to use. For example, the top one there, I'm saying, I want to use a hash join between employee and department. We can only use hash joins because of the way hashing works. Hashing is an algorithm that takes values, puts them into a hash algorithm, and then looks at things that match. So hashing only can work on equality-based joins. If I'm doing e-salary between department low and department high, that's an inequality join. It's a range-based join. It, we can never use a hash join for that particular join. So the hint is, use that term again, ignored. It's actually invalid. That hint makes no sense. It's impossible to follow. For example, this one, the second one, I want to do index hint and use parallel. An index hint by, by itself is a index range scan hint, not an index fast full scan. We can't do range scans in parallel. So the combination of those two hints makes the whole thing invalid. So these are some of the common things that mean a hint is simply we can simply not respect it. The optimizer says, look, I'd love to help you, but I can't. The final question is, well, what if they are valid? What if the hint are valid? You know, what happens there? And this is the classic sort of infamous one. People say, oh, the optimizer ignored my hint, even though it was correct. So let's look at a demo of that. So here's my simple query. It's the age old time of scott.emp and scott.department tables, simple join doing a select star and I get a merge join. You can see I'm doing a merge join here across the database. I might say, yep, I'm gonna, you know, I'm not happy with merge joins. You know, for some reason my sorting, you know, table space is terrible. I have problems with sorting, whatever the reason might be. I'm, you know, I've read that hash joins are super cool. I want a hash join. So I type in use hash and what do I get? A merge join again. This is the classic one where people put out on blogs or on Twitter or any kind of social media. Oh, the optimizer, it ignored me. You know, they just, they're shattered. You know, it ignored my hint. Well, it didn't. Let's explore a bit more carefully what that hint actually is. So if I take that SQL and just pull it apart a bit and insert a few things in there, 
if I highlight the use hash, what does use hash, if you go look at the documentation, it says use hash followed by the table alias says, if you're joining into that table, you have to use a hash join. If I'm joining into D, I must use a hash join. And which might think, well, why was I using a merge join then? Well, let's look at the execution plan. This is the execution plan we saw before, but I've just spaced it out a bit. I'm starting with department table. I'm not joining into the department table. I'm joining into the employee table, leading off with department, finishing with employee. My hint said, if I'm joining into department, make sure you use a hash join, but I'm not. I'm not going into department. I'm just going into the employee table. The only way I can go into the department table is if I start with the employee table. Let's give the optimizer that information. Now I'm saying, look, you must start with the employee table. And then if you choose to go into the department table, it must be a hash join. And lo and behold, we have a hash join. So while we're sitting there saying, oh, the optimizer is going to ignore our hints, that's actually not true. What's happening is we simply gave the optimizer a particular path it must choose under a particular set of circumstances. But there were many other circumstances that were left available to the optimizer. If you see an optimizer ignoring your hints, it simply means that your hint was actually not completely specified. Let's take that simple example and make it uh, a little bit more complicated now. And this was an example that once we get to more real world queries, someone's added the audit hint, which is a very popular hint. And don't get me wrong, I'm a, I'm a fan of the audit hint and the leading hint in the sense that often when we write SQL, we're writing it along the lines of how we expect the database to process it. Someone writing this SQL sort of might be thinking, okay, I wanna start with the employees. Once I've got my employees, then I'm gonna to head to the jobs table. And then I need to find out some stuff about the average salary. So here's my inline view, which gives me all the average salaries for a particular location. And then hopefully I'll sort of work my way through it. It's quite common to see the ordered or leading hints in queries because you're helping the optimizer understand where your thought process was coming from. I run this, I run the audit hint. When I look at the execution plan, well, it obviously didn't respect it. I said start with employees and then go to jobs, but we can see here it actually started with departments and then went to employees and actually finished with jobs. So you might be thinking, well, it ignored my hint again. This one is perhaps a little bit up for debate. One of the things that happens to all queries before they actually get optimized is we do with what's called query transformation. If I actually run a 10053 trace on that query, this is actually what the query looks like before the optimizer finally got its hands on it and trying to optimize it. You can, if you look at a 10053 trace, the final query after transformations, notice there's no inline view anymore. And this is sort of a general consensus. The, the database will try to take nested inline views and subqueries and sort of turn the whole thing into one big giant join. And then it tries to optimize that. That's a very loose definition of how the optimizer transformations work, but bear with me. But you can see this, is, this query here is actually what we then went ahead and optimized. Because we actually took out the inline view and we've reshuffled the tables around, we pretty much have to throw away that ordered hint because there's no guarantee that this reshuffling actually will have the tables in the same order in the actual query syntax that you provided to it with your ordered hint originally. If we've reshuffled the tables around and then still obeyed your ordered hint, who, you know, we're actually getting a, a totally incorrect result as per your wishes. So you just be need to wear that query transformation may make your hints no longer relevant to the optimizer or we actually throw them away for the benefit of the query because otherwise we would be respecting wishes that were not originally yours. The only way you can maybe preserve that is I can tell the database, look, I'd rather you didn't merge those queries into one big ginormous query. So this is one way of preserving your ordered hint. I've added this no merge hint which says take this view called V and I'm not allowing you to merge it back into the higher level query. Treat it on its own merits. Because I haven't merged it, the query will now be presented like this to the optimizer. And because none of the tables have been reshuffled around, the audit hint can be preserved. If I look at the execution plan, we can see what we did. We went employees, then we went jobs as per the audit hint, and then we went into the view.
because it was never re-merged out. If you're seeing leading hints and ordered hints disappearing or not being obeyed by the optimizer, the most probable cause is query transformation. You can see that in a 10053 trace, or you might want to do some no merging to make sure that your query goes to the optimizer um, untouched by its um, transformation process. On a similar perspective, one of the things I'm a huge fan of is query block naming, the QB name hint, which we spoke about in another office hours a while ago. So I've got a query block Q1 here for this outer select and QB name Q2 for this inner select. Because this is the same query as before and I put no hints in besides the query block names, this is going to undergo query transformation. So when I go look at the execution plan and ask for the aliases, the query block names as well, you can see that, well, they're sort of still floating around, but the actual entire query has got a brand new query block name, something that we never gave it. That's because that query that we presented to the database was totally transformed and effectively query blocked anew. This is one of the sort of shortfalls of query block naming is that the query block names you see here and even here, they might preserve your query block names, but they might actually no longer refer to the queries that you were originally responding to. This is the table called D that was in query block number two. Now it's in this query block. This is like source and target. So query block names can literally disappear after query transformation, just something to be aware of. Let me look at one more example here. I've got a table called T. It's, got, it's a copy of DBA objects just for a number of select columns. I might say, look, I want to do a full scan on this. And what does it do? Index fast full scan. Now, how on earth did that happen? I've said, look, I want you to do a full table scan on this table called T2. It's only 80,000 rows. I'm not doing any where clauses. Surely you should do a full table scan, yet it did an index fast full scan. Why is that? Behind the scenes, I didn't reveal this to you. T2 is actually an indexed organized table. So once again, this is a last example of where a hint that seems to be totally valid might have to be ignored by the optimizer. There is no such thing as a table access full on an index organized table because there is no table. It's only an index. Once again, look at things like the structure of your objects if you're getting queries that seem to be ignoring optimizer hints. Uh, there's always going to be a good reason for it. So that's why the optimizer ignores hints. Hopefully that uh, provides some clarity.